Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We're going to get started. It's so lovely to see everyone here. So welcome to our sixth annual mother and daughter conference virtually. And I'd like to begin by inviting our third grader, Jessica Khan, to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Jessica, please, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Stand up, put your right hand over your heart and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jessica, for that lovely Pledge of Allegiance. Next, I'd like to invite Ms. Chan Hobson to lead us for the Pledge of, I'm sorry, to lead us for the Moment of Silence. Thank you. everyone. Uh, last year, 300 people came together to attend the fifth annual daughter mother daughter conference to learn from each other and build and develop relationship across culture. This year, everything has changed because of the COVID pandemic. There are almost 500,000 deaths in the US and the only way for people to meet now is virtually. I found out that almost 3,000 frontline workers passed away in 2020 trying to save lives. Many of them are hospital, are hospital staff and doctors. One of the doctors was Lena Lim, my friend, the first Cambodian female to graduate as a doctor over three decades ago in the U.S. She devoted her entire life for her community and her patient. Unfortunately, she passed away in early 2021 of COVID-19. Please join me in a moment of silence to honor Dr. Lena Lim, uh, and all doctors, frontline workers, and the victim of COVID-19, please begin. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you, Ms. Chan. So next, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Suli Saro to lead the opening remarks. Before I ask her to unmute, I'd like to share a little bit about her biography. Uh, so Dr. Suli Saro, she's the councilwoman here that represents District 6 in Long Beach City Council and is the first Cambodian American who is serving as a city council member. She served as a field representative for the office of former state senator Ricardo Lara, and Dr. Suli was a former chair of Long Beach Citizen Police Complaint Commission. She holds a doctorate degree in education in organizational leadership from the University of Laverne. Dr. Suli Saro, uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Dr. Jia. Um, Jimmy Psul, good morning, everybody. Thank, I want to introduce my daughter. Do you want to say hi, Daya? Hi. How old are you? Four. And thank you so much for joining us today, this morning, and for all the sponsors supporting today's event. I know it wouldn't be possible without all of you. And, you know, I really just want to thank Ms. Chan Hobson of KPA of her unwavering commitment, regardless of the pandemic, um, to, you know, for always uh, her dedication to the community and women for hosting the sixth annual virtual mother-daughter conference. You know, Ms. Chan is a mother figure and a role model that I and many look up to for leadership and guidance. She's helped deepen the relationship of families and across communities in Long Beach. And, um, for that, we are so grateful of you, um, Ms. Chan. And you know, mother and daughter, as I have my daughter here, have a special bond and studies found that mother-daughter relationship determines a girl's uh, fu future relationship and self-esteem because their self-value and their self-image are strongly influenced by messages sent by their mother. And my mother was actually pregnant with me when she crossed the landmine jungles of Cambodia to Thailand, the refugee camp. So I really believe her strength, courage, 
and resiliency was instilled in me early on before I was even born and I hope to carry that to my daughter. And I hope you are inspired by our speakers today and enjoys today's event. And with that, I am so honored to introduce um, our amazing Dr. Jill Baker, who has led us through this um, challenging I, I, pandemic. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, and her so thankful of her leadership right now as we navigate the pandemic. So I want to share a little bit that Dr. Um, Baker was unanimously selected by the Board of Education as superintendent of the Long Beach Unified School District um, back in August 1st of 2020. And so the school district, if you didn't know, is the California's uh, fourth largest with about 70,000 students. She's previously served as the deputy superintendent of schools for six years prior to becoming the superintendent. So during that time, she's provided leadership, supervision, mentor, student achievement, you know, the development of multiple district-wide initiative and system, and always a culture of continuous improvement. So with that said, um, please welcome Dr. Jill Baker. Good morning, friends. It is such an honor to join today's mother-daughter conference in this sixth year. I know it's very different to be online, and I'm sorry for that, but I am so glad to be here. I'm also glad to just take the opportunity to reflect on the impact that my own mother has had on my life. Um, as has been already said this morning, the mother-daughter relationship is an incredibly special one. And I'm not a mom to a daughter, I have one son, um, but my own mother has had an indelible impact on me and the life that I've led. I've also witnessed throughout my life the bond between many mothers and daughters, especially as an educator, and how the role of a mother has the power to change a daughter's sense of well being, her personal confidence, her aspirations, and important to me, her desires for education. Uh, my, my mother and father met in Japan. They were both serving in the Air Force. My mother was a teacher for the Department of Defense. And when I think about her time in Japan, I just think about the reflection of her love of experience, culture, and a commitment to service, and just that desire to make a difference in the lives of others. Um, I, when they returned to the United States, my folks got married, and I was born on an Air Force base in Northern California. My mom was an amazing teacher, but she stepped away from her career as a teacher to raise two children. And in those years when she raised me, she taught me so many things that I've held on to as I matured into adulthood, as I chose a career for myself in education, and as I became a mother myself. So I thought I would just share a few things that she taught me. So what did she teach me? She taught me to value and love education and to see its value very early in my life. She, she pursued education as a way to improve her life. She was the first in her family to go to college, which then laid a path for her younger brother who also became a teacher. And she loved being a teacher in the different phases of her life. I'll never forget how hard she worked when she returned to being a teacher when I was in high school after staying home for all those years. She worked long days and she spent time at night preparing for the next day. And I have so many stories in my mind, beautiful stories of her first grade students, how they learned to read, how they lost their teeth in class, and many things that she told us about observing the magic of children, like watching a caterpillar turn into a butterfly in her classroom. My mom also taught me to be of service to others. In the different phases of her life, she engaged in all kinds of community service. She was a member of many organizations with a mission to improve education in the community, also to help families who were struggling, and to ensure that women in the community were uplifted to achieve their dreams. Um, as a little girl, I remember attending community events and well, maybe being dragged to community events, but so important because I would sit and watch women leading, speaking in public, taking action and caring for others. And those observations really had a big influence on my own development. Lastly, my mama taught me to be strong. My mom's a breast cancer survivor. So when I was diagnosed with breast cancer four and a half years ago, the first image I had was of my mom's strength during her treatment 40 something years ago that inspired me to be strong. 
My mom also lost my dad to cancer more than a decade ago, and she had to learn to be by herself at a time when many women would have folded under pressure, but she didn't. She learned to do things that she had never done before. She took charge of her home and she embraced life as much as she could. So my mom, my mom's aging. She just turned 85 and she's experiencing the onset of Alzheimer's disease, but it's my honor to support her and love her in ways that she has modeled for me over the past 50 years. I got to move her to Southern California in July during the pandemic, but it has been such a blessing. Now I can visit her every weekend. I can do a lot of care for her. Um, and something I love to do is bring photos with me of when I was a child to help her reminisce about the best memories of her life. I also get to share with her how much I love being an educator and I get to show her unconditional love and support. And while I'm sad to see some of her fading away, I'm cherishing each moment with her and trying to shower her with the love that she bestowed on me and my life. So today, what a beautiful day to celebrate mothers and daughters. May each of you connect with one another in new ways through today's conference. And may all of us, whether you're a mother, a daughter, or just here to celebrate mothers and daughters, may we just continue to uplift our girls as they grow in their journey to becoming women. So thank you. Thank you so much for including me in today's program. I'm so glad to be here with you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Jill Baker. Um, I'm choking up now. I'm trying to lose my place here. <laughs> so uh, with uh, the next speaker uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce is Ms. Olari Yim. She's going to be introducing the next uh, key, uh, one of our keynotes. I'd like to talk a little bit about her before she begins. Ms. Olari Yim is a cultural executive producer specializing in business development, global operations management, vision planning, and international strategic alliances. Her career began in the fashion industry with a parallel market to Japan, focusing on franchising, licensing, and private labels. She also has a broad, a broad production experience in business and creative, um, including producing and art directing traditional commercial advertising and media campaigns, such as uh, advertorials, trade shows, award shows, athletic and title sponsorship, grassroots, guerrilla marketing campaigns and cross promotions and more. And in 2017, Ms. Alari was part of the production team hired by Netflix to produce the world premiere screenings of Angelina's Jolie, First They Killed My Father in Siem Reap at Phnom Penh, Cambodia. With all due respect, Ms. Alari Yen, you have the floor. Oh, thank you. Chumdipso, everyone. Um, special thanks to uh, Ming-Chan Hopson. She puts this event on every single year, and it's such a pleasure. And I come from a family of women. My mother is the first of four daughters, and I have a sister, and they all have daughters. So I really appreciate and love this event and understand how much uh, the impact is of our mothers on our perspective of education. Uh, so again, my name is O'Leary, and I am delighted and honored to introduce this year's keynote speaker. Katya is a freelance writer and an award-winning author who is also a journalism professor at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, where she teaches a news writing course a feature writing course and a global communications course. I had the pleasure and great fortune of meeting her a few years ago when she attended a Cambodian cultural festival in Long Beach uh, for Khmer New Year. My sister had written a book called The Immigrant Princess. She had written a book called Exiled and we met, spoke and we swapped books and it was a beautiful beginning. Um, her book Exiled is about Cambodian families and their journey from the killing fields and back. This remarkable book, which talks about deportation and resettlement, is included in a specially curated California State Library permanent collection. Um, not only is this amazing author, has she been awarded grants from the International Reporting Project, the International Women's Media Foundation, and the International Center for Journalists, but she is a lovely, humble, talented human being who I am really happy to call my friend. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Katya Singel. Thank you so much, Alari. And I, I accomplished the first thing. I unmuted myself before I started speaking. I was worried I was going to be the first one to do that today. So ah, first thing. Um, and hearing all these amazing words, it's really hard to go after this. I wanted to especially draw attention to Jessica, who did our Pledge of Allegiance. That, that was beautiful, Jessica. When I was your age, I don't think I 
could have done something like that. Well, and they definitely couldn't have because I'm not bilingual to um, so that part, but just you, you had such great poise and um, that was beautiful. And everyone else has had um, beautiful speeches. I, one of the things I like best is looking at my screen and seeing the mother daughters next to each other. I'm already trying to see like what you guys look like, what, what you share, like <laughs> as far as not just um, features, but mannerisms and things. It's really fun. Um, I already, I, I told Larry yet last night that I'm going to get the recording and send it to my mom because I think she would like that. So when uh, I was getting dressed this morning, I was thinking about what I was going to wear, of course, just on top because no one sees, you know, on the bottom anymore on mine. But the, the top I chose, I was like, oh, I like this one. I'll put it on. And then I realized my mom gave it to me. And then I looked at um, necklace and I put that on and I was my mom gave it to me and I was trying to think, uh, obviously it suits really well now, but so much of, not just my clothing, but, but who I am, it is because of my mom. Um, most, mostly who I am as a writer, I credit uh, to my mom in a lot of ways and who I am as a person. And I want to actually tell you a story with the speech about the role my mom played in helping me become a writer because I really do believe if it wasn't for her I wouldn't be where I am today. So before I could even write I was dictating stories. I have little notebooks filled with poems and other writings older friends and family members jotted down for me. Writing is what I love. It is what I do best. I've known that since I was a small child but when I started college I decided to major in biology because it seemed more practical. I wanted to be able to find a job and support myself. Writing didn't seem like a good option for either of those things. Just a few weeks into college, I was struggling and miserable. My mother pulled out my college handbook, the one where all the courses on offer used to be listed. I think now it's all online, but at the time we had these nice big books and you could just page through. Um, so dating myself there. Look through this and choose the three courses you want to take, she told me. Not the courses you think you should take, but the courses that interest you. What about finding a job, I asked. Don't worry about that now. Just choose the courses you like, she said. So I did. All three courses were in writing. It looks like you're going to study writing, my mom said. And that is how it was decided. I was concerned about finding a job, being employable. My mother wasn't. She knew if it was something I wanted to do, something I loved and was interested in, I would find a way to make a living. She was right. I discovered journalism was a way to make money writing and secured an internship at a local weekly newspaper, followed by another at a far larger daily newspaper. I also got a job waitressing for good measure. My mother hadn't told me anything new. i had always known I wanted to be a writer, but I was scared. I didn't believe I could do what I wanted to do. By asking me to choose the courses I wanted to take and by believing I could make it work, my mother gave me the confidence I lacked. As a single mother, my mom had taken jobs she had to take, jobs that paid decent and worked with her schedule. She was a stockbroker, then in sales, followed by computer programming. By the time I was in college, she was able to do something she really enjoyed, cross-cultural training. When that work dried up, and with both her daughters doing what they love, writing for me, medicine for my sister, my mom took her own advice and decided finally to do what she had always wanted. At 55, 55 sounds better, but she actually corrected me, it was 53. But still, she was in her 50s, she went back to school to become an epidemiologist. Her grandfather had been a doctor and he had put aside money for a grandchild to study medicine, but not a granddaughter, only a grandson. When she was younger, my mother had watched her brother become the family doctor. After her own daughter became a doctor, my mother went back to school to, to, to study disease conditions with classmates who were my age. I watched her support them the same way she supported me. 
Long after I chose my profession, I continued to seek my mother's advice. She's often the first person to read my draft articles and books. She doesn't always tell me they are good. Sometimes she tells me they need work. She doesn't sugarcoat her criticisms. She tells me I can do better. And I know she's right. It isn't what I want to hear. There are times I wish she was like my friend's mother, the one who calls him gushing about how wonderful his most recent article is, even though all he has written is a two paragraph piece about the weather. My mom wouldn't do that. When I applied for my first newspaper job overseas to a country I'd never heard of, Latvia, most people laughed and wished me luck. My mom sent me economist articles on the Baltics and announced my cover letter needed work. She didn't really think I had a shot at the job, but she was going to make sure I presented myself as the best candidate I could. When I got the job, she didn't question my moving to another continent for work. She just helped me find a warm coat and winter boots. I went on to report from Africa, Asia, and Central America. Whenever I had head to a particularly dangerous country, like the Democratic Republic of Congo, my mother tells me to be careful and to update my will. She's consistently honest and practical. It isn't always easy to listen to what she has to say, but is it always worth it? Because my mother hasn't constantly told me what I write is amazing. When she tells me something I write is really good, I know it is, which has enabled me to travel the world writing for the New York Times Magazine, Wall Street Journal, and Smithsonian, as well as publish three books. That is why I dedicated my second book to my mother. Carla. That book was about families and how they fight for each other. It was also what the stories we about the stories we passed down. My great grandfather, the one who didn't want a granddaughter to be a doctor, was also a writer. I never met him, but in the worries he left behind, I see my family and how I fit in. Stories link us. All of you have stories. And they begin before you were even born. I encourage you to ask your parents about those stories and to write them together. It is through our stories that we learn who we are. They aren't always easy stories to tell, but the challenge makes the reward that much better. That is what my mom would tell you. And as her daughter, I believe her. Not because she's my mom, but because she's the person who taught me to believe in myself and the dream I had. And it worked. It came true. I'm the writer I always wanted to be. And that last part, I got to credit a lawyer for because <laughs> I had, uh, I ended it just earlier, but then she was like, no, you need to go further. And I agree. I really want you guys to realize this power of storytelling within families and, and to hear each other's stories and to know Everyone has a story, um, and, and that is kind of how we learn about ourselves. And I, again, I'm really honored to have been asked to give this talk. Uh, it's really special to be here and watch all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was lovely.